Okay, uh, I have made a bit of an executive decision. Uh, if you're here lo looking for uh, trigonometry, I've decided not to rush through integration and try and do some trigonometry as well. So I think we're doing two things badly. So we're just going to recap integration and then finish it off. Uh, and there's actually there was plenty to keep us going for 40 minutes. Now, for people who were in the lesson or the session last week, or if you downloaded it and looked at it, I hope you've looked at the questions from the textbook where I cut it all up and made a bit of an untidy worksheet. But it, it is important that you are happy integrating. Remember, it's the opposite of differentiation. The order is important. Increase the power by one, divide the coefficient by the new power. And then we talked about here how there's got to be a constant because both of those two things differentiate to the same. So if you integrate it, you might have either of those numbers and you don't know which one. Uh, so we, we integrate and get the constant and number. Now, usually something else will be given in the question, which will, actually, which will enable you to find the constant. Now, obviously, integration on its own is a, for something like that, a function like that, very simple, one mark. So how will the exam board make it more difficult? Well, they'll make you do something with the function first. So you've got to remember your laws of indices, your roots and things like that, and it's always easier. My theory is usually take your function, put it into powers, do the integrating, and maybe if you're substituting, put it back. But this one here we didn't. Uh, and it's almost sure you're working. Okay, for the indefinite integral, there's a constant at the end, your calculator will not do it. So it's going to be on the exam because the exam board will be keen that you can demonstrate you can integrate. Then we do another one uh, where a bit more to be done. Expand the top. Divide each term by root x or x to the half. So you're subtracting the powers. Then you integrate and I do it showing all the working. Some people might say integrating that it's x to the power 5 over 2 and then they multiply it by 2 fifths instead of dividing by 5 over 2. You can see why that works. Uh, whatever you do, make sure that you integrate because quite often what we see is that people do all that work and they think, well, oh, I've done a load of work. So put the integral sign. That means I intend to integrate this. And then obviously when you integrate it, don't put the sign. Uh, now, this question here, very similar one. However, this question gives you a little bit more information. It gave you a point on the curve. So again, common theme, bit of algebra, expand the brackets, sort out the powers. Then we say we're going to integrate it. Then we integrate it, get the C. And the question gave us an X and a Y. We put them in and it gave us the C. OK, and that is called the uh, indefinite integral uh, with a C. Uh, whether you find the C or not, if you're involving a C, it is the indefinite integral. Now, the definite integral. There's the function on your calculator. Now, I'm not going to uh, spend hours and hours uh, demonstrating to you how to use your calculator. Uh, if you know how to integrate with your calculator, fantastic. If you don't, to be honest, the text, the, the instruction book is pretty rubbish. Uh, best bet is type the model into YouTube and say you want to integrate and there'll be some tutorial there that leads you through it. It is worth when we get to the definite integral where you've got limits on your integral. More about why they call limits later. OK. Uh, it's very important again that you integrate, you do the algebra, you keep calm. OK, uh, so the, the method is, there's the function. I did the algebra, so I divided each term by x to the half. So it was x to the power of 2 
uh, divided by root x or x to the power of a half. Dividing, you subtract the powers, two minus a half is one and a half. And of course, top heavy fractions are our friends. Please do not put 1.5 in there. It decimals, they're not going to be your friend at all. OK, oh, one more thing. In year 12, we're always integrating with respect to the variable. So our function is in terms of x. And that dx just reminds us that we're integrating the x's. OK, not crucial in year 12, much more crucial in year 13 to keep on. So it's a good habit to get into. You won't have to relearn it for next year. And the other thing is, we bracket, we're integrating the whole function. So that bracket there, and if you notice, I've been fairly consistent about it. We do tend to get lazy. But again, for what comes in year 13, and especially for further mathematicians, get used to seeing that notation because you will see it in questions and it shouldn't uh, phase you. Now, we are, oh, there is a slight problem. I forgot the limits here. So if you're going to do the definite integral between two limits, we should put the limits in on the integral. So that's a mistake by me. And again, another common mistake is people forget to integrate. They know they've got to substitute. Right? So they're aware of that. They're keen to substitute. And quite often they do the algebra, write that, don't integrate and substitute straight into that function. These are common mistakes that people make under pressure in exams. And it, it's not necessarily because you can't do it or they can't do it. It's because you're under pressure, it's an exam. So it is worth practicing so you've got into the routine. Now, once we have integrated, we jump to a square bracket now. It's a very, very simple technique. You substitute the top value in for x there minus and substitute the bottom value in there. Now, the constant, I put the constant in there, but always the constant will disappear. So actually, if you're going to integrate between limits, you don't even have to put the constant in. If you remember, I went through it and crossed them all out to say, well, there's no point putting it in, it will always disappear. Please be careful with simple arithmetic. Nothing worse than losing marks through simple arithmetic. And you do have a calculator, you know, that will handle fractions. And, of course, what you can do, if you type that into your calculator and press equals, it should give you that answer there. So use your calculator to check but you in Wales you must show sufficient working to demonstrate this is what it says in the front of the exam paper and it's true for every question you must show sufficient working to demonstrate the algebraic method you have used so it is worth putting in every line okay and that is especially so for any question that says show that because a show that question will give you the answer. And as an examiner, when I'm marking any question that says show that the answer is this, I look at the two lines before the answer. They're the lines where the marks are going to be awarded. You won't get anything for the answer. Now, how, this question here, uh, the next one we're going to do. So that is a recap of what we did last week. It's quite a good thing because if you haven't done any integration for a week, uh, you'll be on the point of forgetting it. And actually, recapping it yourself, really recapping it yourself, uh, is a good way to remember stuff. Now, this question here, find the possible values of A that satisfy the integral of that function equals 5a squared. Now, these, these the questions like this are going to crop up now and then, uh, and uh, the novel. 
but not quite what you're expecting. Well, the first thing is, let A be a constant. So A is a number, a constant. So effectively, we've got to find the constant. Now, the first thing we're going to do is integrate this side. So I want to find, wait a minute, let me get this camera sorted out, the integral between my two limits of this function. Now you might argue, well, you've just written down the question. Well, true, but you do want to tell the examiner what it is you're trying to do. And that helps, that helps the examiner give you a method mark. Now, can I integrate that? No, because that is not a power. So I need to do some algebra first. I haven't integrated yet, so I intend to integrate it at some stage. The first bit is dead easy. 3 over 7 x squared plus 2a x so minus half and I'm integrating the whole thing with respect to x so that just tells me I'm integrating x's only and I'm not the a is a number and I know you're thinking a is a letter let's just see how it pans out let's integrate so and I'll put a square bracket because I've integrated it's 3 over 7 x to the power of 3 divided by 3 and I use dot for multiply okay plus 2a x to the power of a half minus a half plus 1 is a half divided by a half and my limits 4 and 1 okay i'm not going to substitute in yet i'm going to simplify it which would give me x cubed over seven from there look please cancel plus four a x to the power of a half or root x now the reason i put it back as root x is i'm going to find the square root okay and it's just easier for me you can leave it as x to the power of a half and marking it m1 for knowing that you try got to integrate a1 the accuracy mark for integrating properly m1 again a method mark for knowing to put the limits in which would give me well 4 cubed is 64 64 over 7 plus 4a times root 4 is 2 so that's 8a sorry uh made a mistake oh 8a sorry no not made a mistake 8a that's right look at the wrong line of my solution so, so say that again square root of 4 is 2 2 times 4 is 8 8a minus One seventh plus four a, and they're always going to give you nice numbers that work out. Okay, and that will be sixty four over seven minus one over seven is sixty three over seven, which is nine. So nine and eight a minus four a is plus four a. Okay. So, I've now uh, integrated and worked out that side. Go back and read the question. Find the possible values of a for which that equals 5a squared. So, therefore, 9 plus 4a equals 5a squared. 
and hopefully you'll recognise that as a quadratic equation to be solved for a. So 5a squared minus 4a minus 9 is not. I'm not going to do any more than that. Okay. Uh, if you if you aren't comfortable solving quadratics, that's one thing you can do over Easter. Yeah, uh, and that would give me a is 905 or a equals minus one. And go back and check the question, and it does say the possible values of a. The clues in the question, and you've got two values, so you should be quite happy with that. Okay. So don't panic, calm, methodical, uh, and you know the questions, the functions might look a little bit awkward, but actually the design to work out in the end. So it all drops out nice and neatly in the end. Just be calm on the way through. Now then, uh, so that is the definite integral. Now the biggest application of the definite integral is to find the area under a graph. Uh, and here's a theory. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Your teacher will probably have spent quite a while on this. There's my graph, my function. Okay. And if I, uh, the area under the curve, or we say under the curve, it's, it's not always under the curve, but the area between the curve and the x-axis between b and a, so the, the biggest value and the smallest value, is given by the integral of the function, whatever the equation of the line is, between the limits of b and a with respect to x. Okay? Now, obviously, you might have this situation. Uh, where the area is contained underneath. It's exactly the same. The area contained between the graph and the x-axis is the integral between b and a of the function. Now, few issues. Oh, the answer there will be negative. The negative sign simply says the area is under the graph, not over the graph. Now, there are a couple of issues there. If you've got a, an equation, and I've not set one like this, but maybe your teachers will. Uh, no, I'll do that at the end. I'll show you at the end a potential problem. Uh, the other issue is that they used to really stress me out was, oh, why should I get these the wrong way around? It's not the end of the world. If you get these wrong way around and do that minus that, the numerical answer will be the same. It'll just be the wrong sign. So it's not the end of the world. And you will probably just ignore the minus sign and say that's the area. And that is, would get you, you might lose one of your accuracy marks, but it's certainly not catastrophic. Okay. Now, well, I'll tell you what, we've got. Uh, 20 minutes. Uh, I'll do this one and I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that one. Okay. Very, if you get a question like this, you're lucky. It's a simple one. Find that shaded area. Well, it's all above the axis. So I want to find the integral. So area equals the integral between 2 and minus 1 of 4x cubed plus 4 with respect to x. And that's exactly how I set it out. I integrate, because the question, first question is, do I need to do any algebra on it? No, no algebra to be done at all. It's a nice, neat one for us. So don't forget to integrate 4x to the power of 4 over 4 plus 4x on the limits 2 
and minus one. Okay, just be calm. Okay, be very calm. That equals well, that's x to the power of four. So that would be two to the power of four plus eight minus or well, minus one to the power of four is one. And four times minus one is minus four. Two to the power of four, this is how I do it. Two, four, eight, 16. Plus eight is 24. And just be careful now. One minus four is minus three. Minus minus three is plus three. And the answer is 27. Now, you've listened to me for 20 minutes. Uh, that took me no more than two minutes. So I'll tell you what, uh, I'll give you f uh, five minutes. Five minutes to try this question yourselves. It's exactly the same. Oh, uh, just one question. You might want to stick the, the answer in the, the chat section. What do you know about the answer to question two? Or question I I. What do you know about the answer to that question? If anybody can just put the, the suggestion, I can't see chat. Dr. Evans will. Uh, yeah, respond. I'm here waiting. So, what do we know about that answer? If you're listening to what I said about five minutes ago, you should know something about the answer to this question. Have we got one, Dr. Evans, or not? Not yet, sir. Oh, doesn't come in. We've got one. Would you like me to tell you what it says? Yeah, go on. It will be negative. Correct. So something like that, you get a negative answer. Don't panic, you're correct. OK, so have a go. Uh, I'll give you till it's 1742. I'll give you till 1746. That's four minutes and I'll put the answer up for you. OK. If anybody gets an answer, they could put it in chat. Uh, just let Dr. Evans see it.
notice it goes through the origin. That might have escaped some people's attention. Uh, notice, and actually, if you look at the function, you can see why it goes through origin. There is no constant for an intercept. Okay. So, integrating it. Remember, don't forget to integrate. We'll get two x squared. It's 4x squared divided by 2 minus x cubed. So I'm doing a little bit more in my head because it's x cubed divided or 3x cubed divided by 3 and the 3's cancel. Okay. Minus x to the power 4 over 4. And my limits are 0 and 4. Don't make heavy work of this. Just have to tell you, Mr. Bentley, we've had four correct answers so far. Oh, excellent. So, naught minus and two squared 16, uh, sorry, four squared 16 times two is 32. Uh, sorry. Did you really notice my deliberate mistake? Forgetting the minus sign there is catastrophic to this question. Uh, and it, it's a sort of annoying thing that my boss calls a careless slip and I say, it's not like calling a careless slip. It's going to cost you a lot of, all your accuracy marks have gone. All your, and it's not even a misread. A misread is where you misread the question. OK, so if, if I'd have written a plus four there, you could have called that a misread. Because I misread the minus four for a plus four. But if I've written minus four there and then put plus four there, you can't misread your own work. It's an error. So misreads, there's many of them I've seen. Anyway, uh, plus 64. Minus 64. And be careful with the signs, but it's naught minus 32, which is minus 32. Okay. And if you get one like that, you should be very, very happy. Now then, the very last question. And I've called it the area between curves. And this is a classic question. Now, it could be two curves. It could be a curve and a straight line. The method is exactly the same for both. Now, your first, I did some of it already, uh, but I'm not going to race through it too much. Uh, I'm not going to really race through it because we've got 12 minutes. And when you look at the exam questions, you're going to see an awful lot like this. Your first job is to work out where they cross. If you're lucky, it will give you the points of intersection. If you're unlucky, it won't. But actually, we're only interested in the X values because we only want the X values there and there, don't we? So where they cross, the Y values are the same. So X plus three equals X squared minus four X plus seven, okay? Quadrat you wouldn't believe how many questions are going to be quadratic equations. OK, so the points of intersection equate your two functions. And solve the quadratic equation, you get x equals 4 and x equals 1. And it might be worth putting those in. Right. Now then. You could use two ways of doing this. You could find the area under the curve yeah so that's the bit I've just shaded in there very faintly in purple and we will do that simply by that integral there's the curve sorry I'm, I'm, I'll just try and zoom out a little bit there's the curve with its equation if I integrate that curve between those two points, it will get me that shaded area underneath there. 
I could now find the area under the straight line. It's a trapezium. I would have to find the Y values there and there, but I could find them quite easily. The Y values would be uh, four and seven. Yes. So the areas of trapezium would be at the parallel sides, four plus seven divided by two, multiplied by three, and you would get the area for trapezium, and then you could subtract them. And if you get that right, you would get full marks. But there is a neat way of letting the maths do the donkey work. We want to find the area under the straight line minus the area under the curve. So we're going to integrate the whole thing under the straight line minus under the curve. And then I simplify this algebraically. So my straight line is still x plus 3. Straight line goes first because the straight line is above the curve. It's the area under the straight line, the trapezium, minus the bit I shaded in the, the purple bit. OK, so it's all looking a bit small. That I hope it's good enough for you. Yes. So. Let the algebra do the work. The straight line minus the curve. And instead of integrating or anything, simplify this algebraically. Be careful with the minus sign there, look. Minus x squared plus 4x minus 7 dx. And then I simplify that, which is 4 and 1 of minus x squared plus 5x minus 4 and I'm integrating that with respect to x. Now it's a negative x squared at the beginning, trust the algebra, let the maths do the donkey work. Okay so now integrate it and this is where people forget to do things, they, they, especially when you've done some algebra first. Almost have a mantra, do the algebra, integrate, substitute. Yes. So integrating that and it's minus x cubed over 3 plus 5x squared over 2 minus 4x and my limits are 4 and 1. And all the usual provisos, if you got those the wrong way around and put 1 and 4 there, your answer will be negative, but it will be exactly the same numbers. There's nothing to panic about. And it, it used to be things like that when I was your age that used to really get me in a sweat. And at the end of the day, it's not that big a deal. Substituting, which be careful. Uh, 4 to the power of 3 is minus 64 over 3. Be careful with signs and everything like that. Plus 80 over 2. Minus 16. Minus. And put the next equals 1 in there. We get minus 1 third. Plus 5 over 2. Minus 4. Now, I'm not as good at mental arithmetic as you think, because I've got the answer. I worked them all out last week before when I set the questions. I thought I'll make sure they're all working properly. What I did now was I used my calculator to work out that bit, which gave me 8 over 3, minus that bit, which is minus 11 over 6. And 8 over 3 plus 11 over 6 is 9 over 2. And to be honest, you can write 4.5, you can write 4.5, but 9 over 2 will be perfect. OK, now that is every type of question. And I'll show you in a minute uh, the exam questions that I've also included. I think you might have got them last week. But if you didn't get them last week, look at them this week. OK, uh, just one thing. 
you may get a question like this. I'm not going to make a big deal of it. Okay. Um, I think maybe your uh, math teachers might have done. And ask you to find the shaded area. Now, can someone tell me why I just cannot simply integrate the whole thing like that? So five is the top end, naught is the bottom end. So I integrate between the two limits and I should get an answer. Would that be correct to get the shaded area? If Dr. Evans can look at your responses. I'm waiting, sir. No, because some will be negative and some will be positive. Is the spot on answer. If you get one like that, you have to do it in two stages. You integrate it between 0 and 3, which is a negative answer. You integrate it between 3 and 5, which is a positive answer. Then you ignore the signs and add the two numbers together. So it's the numerical value. And there is no alternative You've got to do it in two stages. And if I was, I mean, they won't do it, but if they really wanted to catch you out, they wouldn't give you the sketch graph either. I mean, just say, find the area between the curve and the x axis. They were not going to do that. They, they're not going to uh, deliberately try and catch you out. A, a, an exam question is going to give you opportunity to show what you know. It's not designed to catch you out. Now, I'm just going to just quickly show you the resources for the last three minutes and then that neatly finishes it off. And I'm quite pleased we didn't rush that. And I think it should be clear for you. Uh, the first thing I've got is integration practice. Right. And all I did was it's not that I'm not a high tech person, as you see, as you've seen. Uh, I'll just cut up a textbook with lots of questions, practice integrating. Uh, the definite integrals there, look, the exact areas under the graph. There's one under a curve and a graph. Uh, you might do it in two stages there. That one, perhaps a triangle and under the curve. OK. And then a review section at the end with some practice questions, a few of each type. And that's from the textbook. And helpfully, I'll put the answers in for you as well. OK. Uh, these are all the solutions to the worked examples. OK, so again, if you want, and then here are the notes. Uh, again, a scan of what I was using to, you know, that look very familiar with the gaps. So it's up to you what you do with that. And finally, uh, I put the exam questions on uh, from uh, Mathematic again very useful website very useful for you uh, uh, because the same the same person is writing the exam now who wrote it in 2005 and the questions you'll see are if we're going to follow a theme integrate it find the area between the curve and a straight line integrate 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 curve. Can you see a theme developing? OK, so plenty to do. Oh, there's one look. Integrate and it changed it there. OK. Uh, they asked you then to find that shaded area. So that's the case where some is positive, some is negative and it's 10 marks, you know, 10 marks. Nice, easy question if you understand what's going on. 
I will probably go back now, curve in a straight line, curve in a straight line. Uh, one now where you go to draw your own graph. Okay. Curve and exactly the same. So, and that's the only questions I could find on integration. So, nice bit of practice for you. And then you can tick off, I hope, after listening to me, you should be happy with coordinate geometry, uh, differentiation, integration, which is quite a sizable chunk of your exam. Okay, thank you for listening and I've just finished perfectly on time, six o'clock. Thank you.